Juba this and Juba that. Juba killed the yellow cat. Juba killed the yellow cat. Bend over double. Hey guys. Hey. We're back. Well, that's called Padding, padding Juba. Padding, padding Juba. Padding Juba is uh, going to be a topic we're going to talk about today. Literally in last. Alan Brinkley's <laughs> American History 14th edition. Chapter 11, Cotton Slavery and the, the old, old South. South. Now, pay close attention to that because we need to know what the old South is to see if there's a new South after the Civil War coming at you. All right, so King Cotton. Wah, 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 wah. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. What we're going to see is um, the ri the decline of tobacco and the rise of cotton in the South, that uh, being the primary basis for the South's economy. Now, um, I'm going to ask real quick, Miss Knowles, why did tobacco, why did it decline? It's not awesome. Um, it's not good for the soil. The prices were unstable for tobacco. Um, and just there was... There were more things that were going to be more lucrative as time oh, went man, on. Yeah, because we have industries in the north now. We've got those right. textile mills. Like textile. we need cotton. We don't need. We need cotton, not tobacco. So right. let's do it. You can't like do a lot with manufacturing tobacco. Like what are you going to do? Right. And so um, where do we go in order to do this and to cultivate all of our cotton? The lower south. Yeah, we go deep south, baby. We're going to shift from the upper south, which is the Chesapeake, being the center of finance or not finance. Jamestown. <laughs> Your moment in the spite lot is, is it's over. <laughs> spite lot. Spite lot. <laughs> Spotlight. Spotlight. It's the same. It's over. It's done. We're done here. It's a Wednesday afternoon, kids. We would all like to go home. But we're here for you. <laughs> for you. And there is a spotlight on Jamestown, and we're going to shift that. We don't need that anymore. No. We're going to move down to Atlanta. We're going to move down to Savannah. Savannah. Charleston. We're going to move down to coastal towns in Atlanta. The South. Atlanta. I think you said that, but Atlanta. Atlanta. All right. See, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like common folk, Atlanta, and she's like highbrow aristocratic. Yeah, so. I'm like Atlanta. <laughs> Atlanta. All right. So, um, expansion of slavery. We need more slaves because of the cotton gin. We've already <clears throat> discussed. So let's find out now. How do we do this? Because the slave trade internationally ain't here no more. True. <laughs> All right, guys. So, <laughs> how does industry in the new, new England affect cotton cultivation? It makes it so much more important. All right. right. Cotton is two thirds <gasps> of the United States export during this period. Mm -hmm. Shut the door. That's right. amazing. And then terrifying. Um, <laughs> Oh, so sorry. a lot of people are going down there. A lot of people are spreading further into the deep south. They're getting cheap land out there because mm -hmm. nobody wants to be in the hot south. But this produces a really horrible side effect, which is what we call the second middle passage. Yes. This is where I have it. No. Okay. But that's fine. So the second middle <laughs> passage, guys, really quickly, um, is just the – it's – the term we apply for the experience of <laughs> it's the experience um, of slaves that they have mm -hmm. moving from the upper south to the deep south, the lower south. Right. Because um, we're still trading. We're still trading slaves. It's just yes, within it's just internal the country. Right. <laughs> and when we are um, moving slaves in this, uh, like further down into the deep south, um, we do it in something called a coffle, C-O-F-F-L-E. Mm -hmm. And a coffle is easy to remember because it is awful. Yeah. Um, it's basically you get like chained up around the neck and you walk in a line. Um, That's and a chain gang is too, right? Uh, yeah, like around the feet. This is like, you, oh, yeah. you actually get like a wooden, like almost like, what are those? You put your head through it and your hands through it. Like what? What are those called? Like a, not a stake. No. Stocks. Stocks. It's like, like a stock standing up and you're all connected. And you have to walk. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you're walking into the deep south. Nobody cares if you fall down or not. If right. You're, if you need water or anything like that. And you're treated, I mean, the other group that's also moved this way are animals, like mm -hmm. livestock. Um, so it's it's an unfortunate situation and just dehumanizing that, very much so and um, families are going to be broken up in this experience we just refer to as that second middle passage um, so quite sad mm -hmm. okay well now we're actually on this slide <laughs> um, southern trade and industry <coughs> um, 
one of the things that is going to cause the south to move apart from the north and like have a completely different like identification i don't think i'm saying the right word like it's just completely different from the north and that a big thing is the manufacturing sector uh, we don't have that. We don't have manufacturing in the South, mm-hmm. right? Well, like at all. They right? Don't we don't really need it. Because our economy is doing just fine with King Cotton. Mm-hmm. Um, we're making a lot of money. Mm-hmm. We don't have to buy all this equipment. It's just uh, we got our cotton gin, we got our slaves, and we're making a ton of money. And by we, I mean like a quarter of the people. And they, <clears throat> it's not that they have absolutely no industry. They do right. have some local industry, but it's really small. Very small And scale. it's basically to um, outfit the people in the plantations and even the slaves um, to an extent. Very simple clothing, of course, but mm-hmm. that's basically their job and that's it. Right. Um, so there's no need for like a really big like industrial sector by any means. And when we don't have, we don't have industry, we also don't have that transportation system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We talked, when we talked about the American system, how like the roads are connecting the Midwest and the North and the the canals are up in the North and the Midwest and the trains are in the North and the Midwest. And so we're moving further and further apart industry wise, transportation wise, we're, we're physically not connected to the North. And it is making for this really deep split between the north and the south yeah i wonder if calhoun had gotten his way in that document where he's like hey let's build some stuff also in the (laughs) south y'all um if things had been maybe different Mm -hmm. you know i wonder but shoulda woulda coulda yeah exactly calhoun try harder um so we don't have canals have you ever tried to build a canal in florida it's very difficult (laughs) it's not gonna be easy it's not gonna be easy okay the soil's really damp down here yeah so that's not a good idea um railroads they're in the very beginning stages but they're there's like going to be one through here right um and the roads i mean who needs to be on the road just whoever's coming to get your stuff and take it back and take it to the like why are you going to spend your money on all that stuff well there's a guy who says well maybe we should be spending money on these things y'all are dumb y'all are dumb (laughs) and his name (laughs) is mr debeau James DeBow. J.D. DeBow. J.D. Yeah, his middle name is D for Daniel. <laughs> it's not funny. I don't know why she's laughing. I don't know, I don't know why you said it. John D. DeBow. D for Daniel. <laughs> John D. DeBow has a, a magazine. It's called mm-hmm. a review. It's Just called DeBow's Review. He is the editor mad. of it. And guess what he says? He's like, South, you got to get it straight. You got to put some money into all this stuff and oh also slavery is so stupid in terms of economically because we can never compete with the north in right the long run. you're never going to choice. be able to do more if we Than are this. this if we're doing this people should have listened showed them what it could have once again also a really nice piece of sfi that yeah that debo's review love it Come on. love it okay um southern white society so planner class we've talked about the planner elite for a super long time Mm -hmm. and so this is just a quick little description and it's one that makes me sort of irritated and angry (sighs) so first of all the planner elite which now we call just the planner class is they this is the plantation owners right planter plantation uh and they're like got their pinkies in the air like drinking like tea or whatever they drink lemonade on lemonade the on the veranda in the <laughs> afternoon um they're doing that like they think they're aristocrats like they're <clears throat> fancy folk right and they have those same values and by those values we mean the men are the defenders of the family yeah. um what we now call chivalry and to that i say no thank you don't associate these please two things please please do not try to defend me sir because we are modern ladies now. Um, but, you know, open doors. It's still nice. Both women and men. Just open doors. Be nice. Be nice to people. Yeah, everyone. Um, <clears throat> but then we have something for the ladies. And the position of the ladies here with the cult of honor is to reinforce the role of the men being all yeah. night to the round table the for us. The quote-unquote southern lady that is an aristocrat. It's not all It's not all people. It's not the plain this, folk. This cult of honor, it's the aristocrats. The southern lady, it's the aristocrats. The plain folk, no. But this idea of the southern lady is to kind of like let the men who are part of the cult of honor like fawn over you. Yeah. Scarlett O'Hara. 
But even she was like stronger willed. She was than this. she had a yeah, backbone. Yeah, what is a <clears throat> what's a plantation called she's on? I couldn't tell you right now. I will to think about it in a minute. I would have to think about mm-hmm. it, yeah. Um so we these are the affluent women. Um there's and much like all the other women, they their uh, sphere is at home. Yeah, and it's a good one to remember because in the north, the big push is the cult of domesticity, and mm-hmm. here it's the cult of honor. So basically, if you are a woman in the 1830s and 40s, you gotta you gotta sign up on a cult. Yeah, <laughs> you better join a cult because it's a scary time <laughs> for women for many reasons. If you're not a part of a cult, you're do you even exist? You're a prostitute. Wow. <laughs> I mean, you're a factory worker. True. I mean, not you're historically an actor. Yeah. I, I thank you. That was way harsh, but not it, historically. Where's inaccurate. the lie? It's not there. <laughs> exactly. Right. Okay. So the peculiar slavery. institution. Hey, if you listen to the Between Two Caitlins with Miss Alonzo, she mentioned the peculiar institution. Uh-huh. Um, so shameless plug for our other plug. podcast. Like um, and subscribe. <laughs> Subscribe on Patreon. Um, so, the peculiar institution, who coined that phrase? I feel like it's TJ. I feel like you're right. Probably always right. It's peculiar because it's like only in one place and they're so shut off from everybody else that it's like, what is this institution of yeah. slavery? What is this peculiar and institution? Don't forget that, like, people like TJ, even though TJ had slaves, can't even go there right now. Um, he was at one point like, we've got to get rid of slavery before we're a new country because this is actually a remnant of Britain that's right. existing in the United States. And we don't want that. Mm-hmm. So this was forced on us by the British. Let's get it out of here. And then he still owned lots of slaves. Yeah. He so. kind of really backtracked on that. Mm. So high slave mortality rates, nothing mm-hmm. unexpected here, unfortunately. Really bad conditions. Really bad mal- conditions. Malnourished, particularly for people working in the mm-hmm. fields. Yes. Mm-hmm. There, once again, listen to Miss Alonzo's, there's, there's a, a division within the slave culture that's like, if you are working in the house, you're of a higher caliber, I guess, than if you are working in the, uh, the slaves. If you're working in the fields mm-hmm. and you get treated a lot worse in the fields, there's a lot more abuse of you and a lot more malnourishment, and therefore that's going to lead to that high mortality rate. And abuse is <clears throat> is quite different. You know, if we if we look at the domestic slaves um, that mm-hmm. are kept in the house, um, very often that is it's not always. I would never say that, but it's very often. Um, at the desire of the master mm-hmm. to have um, a woman that he would want to have close to him that he may even um, father child a child with. Speaking uh, of Thomas but Jefferson. speaking of Thomas Jefferson, right? And unfortunately, um, it's difficult to think about these relationships outside of um, being very abusive. Right. Um, sometimes we try to excuse it, like, well, Sally Hem- Hemming, Sally mm-hmm. Hemming, and Thomas Jefferson like loved each they other. They had a relationship, but at the end of the day, she was still his property. Right, and that's you can't erase that. Um, they would have children together, and um, very often this would make that southern genteel woman very upset. Right, it's a constant sign of infidelity by the husband, and often she would take that out on on the on girl that because yeah. that that female slave that was in the house more often than not that's going to be catering to that Southern woman. Mm -hmm. And so that Southern lady was not going to be her best Southern lady self Mm -mm. because of this relationship that this person a lot of times would have with her husband. Not, not, not 100% of the time. A lot of times. I mean, I'm going to say most of the time. I'm going to say most of the time. Okay. (laughs) You're not wrong. Um, We can talk about slave codes. Do we need to? Got it. it. <laughs> All right. So, uh, what about southern cities, guys? Jacksonville's uh-huh. a city. Yes. I mean, it's a baby city. Did you know? Um, thank you to uh, Drew McAfee for asking the question. Uh, what was the population of the United States in the 1830s? And guess what? It's like 9.6 million plus. It's a it's, it's a dec dec number. It's not a small number. So. Um, when we we know that there are cities in the south, those are basically the major like trading locations, mm-hmm. that little hub of trade. So um, that is something that we certainly see in the south. So how do people deal with slaves, like within the urban space? And the answer is it's kind of twofold. Either you're like, you know what, I don't need slaves here, and then you sell them. 
Um, or you basically hire them out during the day yeah. and let them work, and then you take their money. You steal from them because you're a robber. <laughs> yes. Of hopes and dreams. Yeah, they obviously wouldn't have that the field work that was in right. outside of the cities, and so they would be mostly household. And if you don't need them in your house, you sell them to go do field work at other places, or you hire them out in, like she said, take good money. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, free African-Americans, we certainly see um, free African-Americans, so it's not that many in the mm -hmm. South, um, and there are a few reasons why it's hard to, like, maintain that you are free when a guy's staring at you, like, you're prove like, it. But like, you're, you prove it? But you're African. Right. You have African blood in you, so mm -hmm. you're clearly not free. Um, that was a... That was an interesting piece that I read, was, like, if you had any, like, remnants of African mm -hmm. blood in you, mm -hmm. slave. Yeah. Well, we'll get um, to that when we talk about Plessy versus, Plessy versus Ferguson. I mean, the guy was like 1 16th uh, black. Yeah. And still. Velo. Mm -hmm. But still treated as such. Um, yeah. Well, also, slavery in the cities if, if and also in the fields, I guess, or out into the farmlands, if you were a generous master, maybe sometimes you'd offer these people their freedom. A lot of slaves could buy their freedom if they mm -hmm. had enough in their pockets. Um, some were just freed by a master, uh, but we do have a, a number. It's a small number of freed African Americans, and they wouldn't really stay in the South. Yeah, it's dangerous for them. <clears throat> it's very to stay dangerous in the South, for them, and the white masters really don't want them to stay here mm -hmm. because it could potentially instigate conflict, rebellion, anything like that. So we do see a tightening of slave codes in the South. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, these slave codes are so the way that they're enforced is so haphazard. Um, some are very, very strict with it. Right. Some masters are very lenient and, and somewhat, I say somewhat kind and benevolent, but in a, in a sense that they are trying to become the patriarch of this family they create with the slaves as like a system for the household. But it's really, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a scheme. Right. It's a scheme to be like, don't betray me because I it's am It's all a father. ploy to have that like loyalty. Yeah. Like the, the dependency, so like the factor system that we impose on the Native Americans, we're trying to build that dependency just so that they can do what the man tells them to do. Right. Slave codes. Are they legit laws? Maybe state and local. Yeah. Not like, but I'm trying to think why they were so haphazardly enforced. Um, I think because <clears throat> unless you, unless you as an owner or as a plaintiff, it unless or you reported okay. it, yeah. And that's because you can't you can't learn to read, you can't right. get married, you can't. But we know that many slave owners do allow those things. Yes. But again, it's to reinforce that, like I'm your I'm papa. Your, don't be see upset what with I me. did for you. Right. What What are you gonna give me now? Right. Um, your loyalty. So uh, we have some. There okay. we go. Slave markets slave and foreign markets. trade. Um. So sacramental passage coming back at you. Uh. But the slave, slave market you see here that's actually like. It's like a legit building right. where this like, is going to happen. This is a store. Yeah, it's like institutionalized. Um, <clears throat> so we see that happening. Um, separating families is not uncommon, of course. Mm -hmm. We see that quite often. Um, yeah, it's, so it's, def it's, it's difficult to continue the idea of, um, what am I thinking? To continue. There's, con there's a lack of consistency in yeah. slaves' lives right? because of it. Because they're just constantly like up. Yeah. And the slave trade, the foreign slave trade is, is done. Yes. We so, don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. That was 1808, yeah? Yeah. It was in the Constitution. Right. That it, we were like, okay, it can stay around, but it has to work itself out by this date. Mm -hmm. And that was the date. So now we just, and so we're like, yay, America, but no, yay, well, no, America. No, because we still have this. Yeah. It's now a, while well, birth rates are pretty, or mortality rates for slave children are very high because mm -hmm. of malnutrition, um, it's, it's still self-perpetuating. Mm -hmm. Okay. Rebellions. All right, rebellions and resistance. Um, so, obviously, slavery is not fun. Um, so we have a lot of, we see a good deal of resistance. There are some some forms of resistance that's just like breaking machines mm -hmm. or like refusing to work, but that would often end up very badly for uh, Gotta, slaves. There's the, I have to make um Make a show of it, you know. Right. What is that? Uh, make an example. Make an example. <laughs> Words. Um, so, like, theft, uh, breaking the cotton gin, 
Because um, they are experts in field work. Right. They, they know what they're doing. So if they want to slow down production, Here they we can go. slow it down. I know how. Um, running away oftentimes would happen mm -hmm. um, to the north. But now, but we also will see like full-blown rebellions. Well, we also see um, a lot of suicides. Yeah. Unfortunately. Um, we also see, because it's almost Halloween, in Louisiana at an old plantation, a lady poisoned her master's family mm -hmm. just a little bit with oleander, <laughs> put it in their food, bit. hoping that she would get the children and the wife sick so that she could nurse them back to health. And it turns out she killed them all. And now they still haunt the premises. And you can stay there, guys. It's I want to like go. It's a hotel sort of thing. It's very I'm scary. going. All right. And I'm bringing my, like, bring in my ghost equipment. Two, four, and six. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> All right, so yeah, we do see some rebellions here. We have talked about Stono, 1739. Yep, We've talked day. about Denmark Vesey, which was on your DBQ packet for Air of Good Feelings. Denmark Vesey, lots of people got executed afterwards. Word. Now we got Gabriel Prosser. Now Denmark Vesey, Gabriel Prosser, and Nat Turner rebellions, mm -hmm. which happens in 1831. Um, they all use the Bible as their motivation. Right. It's morally wrong to be doing this. Right. So, bye. Right. And this was what our issue was with education. Yeah, this is what the whites feared. Mm -hmm. And now because the whites want their slaves to be part of their, they want them to be institutionalized, like in the sense of like, go to my white church, listen to my white preacher, mm -hmm. do these things and listen, and we can tell you like propaganda in the middle of it. Um, and they're like, oh, wait, so... The, the slaves in Egypt were freed. Let's do it. Oh, oh, this is not good for us. Yeah. So there you go. So Prosser, captured. And this lady here. Oh, Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman, a queen. Love that woman. Underground Railroad. She's, look at her. She's like, I ain't messing with it. Yeah. Let's do it. Take now, my picture. Nat Turner, just real quickly for everybody. Um, he, it's a, we don't need to talk about how the rebellion happens, although it is very interesting if you want to ask me in class. Uh, but Nat if you'd Turner, like to take a quick detour like in class. Little, <laughs> little side note: um, <clears throat> Turner is not captured immediately, mm -hmm. and he um, basically what they start doing in like in this portion. Where are they in South Carolina? Probably. Yeah. Um, they start setting like the plantation homes on fire at night, and all the people run out of the house. And when you run out of the house, they kill you. <laughs> so I don't. Know. Wow. Knows. <laughs> they kill you. <laughs> <laughs> and then they keep doing this over and over and over again, right? So now nobody learns. Like nobody, you know, right? And go so out the back door. now, if your <laughs> house is on fire, you assume you're about to get like cut down with a machete. Mm -hmm. So now you just stay in your burning house. Like it is a no win, zero um, win, situation. zero win situation. I know. I also said I would tell you about that in class, but this is such good, interesting stuff. So at this point, Nat Turner, all of his conspirators really get captured. Uh, Nat Turner disappears and they start referring to him as like the Southern boogeyman because oh, yeah. whites are terrified about leaving their homes because they think that they're going to get ambushed again. Mm -hmm. uh, he eventually is captured. It's within about a month uh, and he is executed. Um, so yeah. for them, it was sort of that Tucson Louverture fear. It's coming back now in America. Ooh. Yeah. Good connections, Clazo. High five. Excellent. Self. She high five herself. I did. I did not high five her. <laughs> <laughs> now, how else do slaves uh, not necessarily reject any other culture, but maintain their own? Kind of like exercise their own autonomy. Yeah. Let's do it. Ish. And that's going to be through culture. Culture. culture and slavery. So we see through uh, language. Um, they obviously are speaking some, they, they have to learn English to communicate, but they're kind of mixing it in with their older um passed down African languages, and that's called pidgin. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, it seems a little... Uh, it's kind of like Creole to me. A very, that's what I was going to say. I couldn't figure, think of the word, though. It's like Creole. Yeah. Where you're mixing these two like, things together to come up with your own sort of Still, if version. I talk to people from Shreveport, Louisiana, I only understand about a third of what they're saying. <laughs> Pardon? What did you just say? Yeah. Kick yeah, that like, Cajun. Repeat, please. Like, it's very difficult. I can't. Right. Um, it's a beautiful language if you speak it, by Right. The way. I just, it's hard for me. I, yeah, I can't understand the, I can't place the accent. Yeah, and Miss Nolte <coughs> did have some examples of pigeon, but now she does not. Wait, I, oh, I Vex ah. means angry. Yes. Uh, vex. Chop. 
eat. Vex is you're upset. Uh, chop, come chop is come and eat. Um, where was the good one? How you day? How are you doing today? Mm -hmm. um, I know Sabi. I don't understand. <coughs> so, so you can see how it would be. It's a mix. It's a mix. It is a mix. And I mean, we can understand portions of it, obviously. Right. But it just became. Like if someone language. said those things to me, I probably would be like, how you day? Like, oh, I'm fine. Right. Like, right. So it's a, it's a little mix. That's, that's our pigeon language. And also, upon me Googling and finding this article, there's a pigeon language for each area of Africa oh, sure. that these people are coming from. So that was just, oh man, I just closed my phone. I want to say, what is it? Nigerian pigeon English. Mm. That's what that was. But there's all kinds of different, I mean, because there's different languages in Africa. So there's different pigeon languages Very in cool. America. Well, yeah. the more you know. Hey. <laughs> um, all right. So religion. No? Yes? Yeah, importance of slave spirituals. And uh, so I guess I don't, what do they want for that? What does your book want, guys? <laughs> Whatever. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Um, what I was going to talk about is um, like music and mm -hmm. dance and um, we call it, like we were playing earlier, it's called Padding Juba. And it's like, like I'm going to do it now for you kids. Ready? Oh no, it's loading. I'm going to do it again. Keep, keep slapping. Here we go. Oh my gosh, I wasn't listening to the words when I Googled it the first time. Yeah. Oh, wow. Guys, <clears throat> that's deep. So that is Padding Juba, which it, it comes actually from um, African communities, different tribes in Africa through the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, I mean, it's just really, it still sounds a lot like some Caribbean music um, that you listen to. Right. Um, well, we but they start, adapted a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And so they just work all that into um, their... Uh, Kind of congregating outside of just the slave time or like this being in the field um but also it's used to communicate in many ways mm -hmm. um while on the field um <coughs> it's called colin colin like return is that a thing it's like it call know. and answer i don't know yeah um, that's what that's what that was like call and answer we do oh, this, this. Respond. The, we do okay. this. Respond. Call and respond. Call and respond. There we go. Um, now, African American religion. Wait, I found out. Oh. Spirituals. It's just hymns. So, like, go down Moses. And yeah, like, but swing low, sweet chariot. They're they're uh, songs. They're hymnals that they've created based to on their Christian their time tradition. Got and it. also the Christian religion that they're not. Which they about. also did in <clears throat> um, Briar Rabbit. Sure did, Briar Rabbit. The rabbit is actually um, an African, in many tribes, an African symbol of a trickster. Uh, yeah. And so that story actually is developed during this period, which Disney, we got to talk. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Disney. So slave religion. So listen, they go to these white ministers and they go to white church with their masters and all that stuff. And mm -hmm. then they come home and they're like, oh my gosh, we just got to make it like, like we need some like, like right. patting Juba up in this. Right. So it becomes much more emotional, much more expressive, much more like hallelujah kind of mm -hmm. I interactive. Sort interactive. Of. That's yeah. a good word. Um, and so that's what they wind up doing. And that eventually will um, help them easily kind of develop and like, <clears throat> become part of the Baptist church mm -hmm. once we get to that. We are not there yet. So shut all your three, mouth. All Colossal. three of these things, the, the language and the, the slave spirituals and the slave religion, it's all them taking this here in America that they've kind of been forced to learn and then mixing it with their culture. That's super important. Um, Creole religion is not a thing, but like the language is mixed. The religion is a mix because it's influ influenced by their customs that they have been passed through through their lineage uh, coming from Africa and then also like what they learn here. And a lot of the religion, uh, the messages are obviously going to be more towards freedom. Mm -hmm. Moses, way down Moses, the spiritual right. uh, freeing of the slaves. Slaves, uh-huh. Um, because, I mean, the Bible says it. And you're preaching right. all this religion. What's the deal, man? Yeah, and the deal is there's no communication about this right. yet. Right. There's okay. Nothing. All right, guys. So, culture of slavery, this is our last slide. Coming in at a cool 30 minutes here. Um, the slave family. Slaves 
are often, while they are usually, because of slave, slave codes, not allowed to marry, but mm -hmm. they sometimes will. Um, and they're just little civil ceremonies. And very often after child has already been produced, which is not ta taboo at all because... In this culture. In this culture. In, uh, like in the white culture, very taboo. Very taboo. Yeah. Um, in the slave culture, it's not. Not at all. And that is largely because of circumstance. Because mm -hmm. not only are you not allowed to marry, but um, when you do, you still may be separated very quickly, very quickly. after that. And right. so this just becomes part of the culture at that point. And mm -hmm. it's something later that um, whites will kind of look down upon as somewhat immoral. And it's mm -hmm. not immoral. It's just part of the condition born out of, of slavery. Yeah. So, man, that we went, that felt good, what we just did. Really? Yeah. All right. Importance of kinship networks. <laughs> kinship. Um, this is a – you just – tell them about kin. Oh, you kin. know. All right. So, like we uh, – like Ms. Clauser just said, because you'd be so, so separa separated so quickly from these people and given no notice, like your husband's gone, maybe your kids are gone, maybe you're gone, um, you have to develop – strong relationships with the people that you're around and so your your friends and the people that you are I mean, really imprisoned with they become your your new family um and it's kinship it's like a little mix between family and friendship they're families here um but it's super important to them because you need that like that personal you need a you need relationships you need you connections need, you need people. bonds with people and so to help keep themselves grounded and sane, really, um, they have to. They have to. They have yeah. to have marriages like this. They have to have kinship networks because their families are not with them anymore. Mm -hmm. <sighs> On that note, but that that wraps this <laughs> up, guys. Uh, we do have one more chapter left in this, which is such a fun one. Um, <laughs> Super. Fun. Probably probably going to be about a three-hour-long video on that. So It's not my personal favorite. Get to listening. Kidding. We'll do most of it in class. Okay. Um, For sure. Well, patting Juba on the way out.